Hey guys, welcome back to the Nihongo Master Podcast. I'm your host Azra and we're happy to introduce you to Season 4. You might be thinking, what? Where did Season 1, 2 and 3 go? If you're a regular listener, or even better, a loyal one who's listened from Episode 1, chances are you've already listened to all three of them. Our previous episode from the start, till before this, have had a whole revamp and divided into three digestible chunks. Don't worry, nothing much has changed. We'll still bring you two episodes every week. One cultural one and the other our language series, Study Saturday. The only difference is that every season has a theme, and all the content in the season will be related to that. And this season is all about the biggest thing a lot of us are really dying to do right now, but impossible thanks to the global pandemic. Travel. But we're not going to talk about general travel, talking about Japan travel. I'm sure you've read the title of this podcast episode, so you know we'll be chatting about a travel bucket list for Japan. Hold your horses, we'll get to that in a minute. I'll just give a brief rundown of what this new and improved season is going to be like. It's worth a short minute or two wait before we get into the main attraction, I promise. So season 4 revolves around Japan travel. For the next two months, we're going to be feeding you all the information you need before you travel to Japan, when the borders are lifted and we're allowed to hop on an airplane, of course. It's not going to be a boring what to bring or where to go. You can get all of that content on the Nihongo Master blog already. The weekly cultural episodes are structured into bite-sized and fun travel-related topics that are uniquely Japanese. And of course, we still have Study Saturday every weekend. The only difference is that the grammar language we introduce are not only essential ones, but also will be extremely useful during your Japan travels. Even the role-playing scenarios are tweaked into situations that you probably will be in when you're here. Okay, okay, we're finally going to get into this episode's topic, the basic bucket list. I'm sure you've read tons of articles online about this. There's the standard, visit these specific places, and eat local food. And the list goes on and on and on to more than 50 things to do. Boy, we don't have all the time in the world to read or do that. So that's not what we're going to do today. Instead, this Japan basic bucket list has only four on the list. You heard it right, four. Told you, it's the most basic of lists, but a damn good one. The first on your Japan bucket list is balance city and nature. Most of us think of the bright lights and neon signs of the capital city Tokyo first and foremost when thinking about where to visit in this island nation. But keep in mind that this island nation is huge. There's literally so much more to Japan than the Shibuya Scramble and Asakusa Sensoji. Although, that temple is definitely worth the visit, seeing as it's the oldest one in the city and all. I'm not saying that you shouldn't visit Tokyo and it's a waste of time. In fact, Tokyo is lovely and a city that will always have a place in my heart. I'm saying you should definitely spread out your time across the mainland rather than just one toshi to mean city in Japanese. Venture out to the rural, or inaka, areas and you'll discover a whole other side to the country. You don't even have to go so far. Even just a quick one or two hour drive out of Tokyo to Yamanashi. You'd be surprised at the world of difference these two areas have. Plus, a trip to the countryside gets you a splendid view of Fujisan. And while you're there, you might as well climb the tallest mountain in Japan, right? If going from one end of the stick to another is too extreme for you, then pick the middle ground, a kōgai suburban area. Cities around Tokyo are considered to be kōgai, like Kawasaki and Chiba. Alternatively, you could kill two birds with one stone and pop by the mountainous town of Hakone, just an hour's train ride from Tokyo, where not only can you venture out of the city zone but also experience local hot springs, known as onsen. The shizen, or nature, is quite beautiful out there all year round. But spring and autumn are my favourites to pop by down there. So you see, even around Tokyo, you can get that city and nature balance. Don't even get me started with the northern and southern parts of Japan. I've talked about that loads in our Island Life episode, Season 1, Episode 5. Here's a quick vocab recap. Toshi City Inaka Countryside or rural Kōgai Suburban Shizen Nature The next on the bucket list is Drown in Spirituality. Scattered around the country are shrines, jinja, and temples, otera. Even with the walk down the street your accommodation is at, you can come across a few local ones. Of course, there are a few that you should have at the top of your jinja to otera list, like Sensoji and Meiji Jingu in Tokyo, as well as Fushimi Inari Taisha in Kyoto. Oh, by the way, fun fact, Taisha and Jingu are also other ways to call a shrine. Taisha actually means Grand Shrine. During your time here, never stop visiting these holy grounds. If you're visiting various cities, 
visit a few of them in each one. There are some uphills making you work for the view, and others in hidden caves where you can pray for a deep desire. There was one shrine that I went in Fukuoka called Tazaifu Tenmangu Shrine, where it had a small cave. I had to really find it though. It's believed that if you make a wish in that cave, it'll definitely come true. A friend of a friend wished to be married, and the year after she went there, she actually did. But anyway, if you're not sure whether the holy ground you're at is a temple or a shrine, look out for Tori, a traditional Japanese gate that's usually red and marks the transition of mundane to sacred ground. If you see one before entering the grounds, then it's a shrine. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Even Japanese people themselves don't really take note of the difference. At both places, you can get omikuji, which is a fortune slip, to see if you're going to luck out this year. Now, let's quickly recap the vocab. Jinja. Shrine. Another way to call a shrine is Jingu. Otera. Temple. Taisha. Grand shrine. Tori. The red gate. Omikuji. Fortune slip. By the way, if you haven't checked out our official website yet, why not give it a browse? At Nihongo Master, we offer efficient Japanese lessons that are quick, easy, and fun for Japanese language learners of all levels, from beginners to advanced. Our smart tools will assist you in areas where you need a little bit of a push and congratulate you on the ones you waste. With a community of over 50,000 Japanese students, you're not alone on your learning journey. Make new friends and improve together with our point system, collecting points as you go along. Ask away any questions you have on our group discussion pages. There's sure to be others as well as our Japanese instructors that are quick to answer. You can also take Nihongo Master with you on the go and learn Japanese as you trot the globe. Practical, right? The third on our list is to immerse yourself in culture. This is going to be a brief point, but every city that you go to will be sure to have a museum, or a kubutsukan. The land of the rising sun has quite a story to tell, even about the times of when it wasn't known as Nippon. I mean, sure, you can read about them online, but these museums have information that you cannot find anywhere else and artifacts that you can see with your very own eyes. There's a variety of indoor and outdoor museums for you to discover. Some even have cafes or a wee cup of kappa in between your learning journey. If you go to outdoor ones, they might even have a foot bath. I get it, not everyone's interested in walking around staring at figures. If you're not such a huge fan of history, then go to a bijutsukan instead, an art gallery. Japan is rich with art, from paintings to fashion. Take your pick of permanent and temporary exhibitions, featuring legendary local and international artists and designers. You don't have to spend a whole day in one, and you definitely don't have to go looking for one. Most of the time, museums and art galleries are tucked in between attraction spots. Now for a quick vocab recap. Hakubutsukan Museum Bijutsukan Art Gallery Last but definitely not least on our bucket list, drink your hearts out. Sure, sure, we have the whole eat local delicacies. Ramen here is delicious and sushi is extremely fresh. And if you really want to know more about washoku, Japanese food, we have a whole episode talking about it. Season 1, Episode 6, The Munchies. But what no one really tells you is that the island nation is the best for sake, a term in Japanese used to refer to all alcoholic beverages. I bet you thought of Japanese rice wine when I said that. But for that, we say Nihonshu. Get your fill of all the alcoholic drinks this country has to offer. Different cities have local breweries as well, so you can go on a beer tasting trip around the nation. If you're short on time and can't afford to hop between city to city, don't worry. Your local bar by your accommodation has got you covered with the standard namabiru, draft beer, and a range of kokuteru, cocktails. In fact, some places have nomi hodai, an all-you-can-drink deal where you can drink all you want, for a certain amount of time, of course, and for a bargain price. Make some friends and have a nomikai, a drinking party. Here's a quick vocab recap. Sake, alcoholic drinks. Nihonshu, Japanese rice wine. Namabiru, draft beer. Kokuteru, cocktail. Nomikai, drinking party. Nomi hodai, all you can drink. What did I tell you? Our bucket list might be basic, but it's still extensive, getting you doing the things you can only do in Japan. 
Head over to Nihongo Master Blog if you're interested in reading up on them some more. And if you're keen on picking up some more Japanese for yourself, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and the official website to learn more. Thank you so much for listening in. Join me in the next one, where I'll be walking you down another avenue of Japan's rich culture. Mata ne!